Hi there ladies, how you all doing? Sandra here, come back for another video. Uh, if anyone doesn't know me, they're watching me for the first time. Um, I'm Andrea, um, I like to help and support women in midlife through challenges, hot flashes, insomnia, l lack of energy um, and I help them to look at diet, lifestyle, mindset and exercise. Um, so they can have more energy, it's going to feel better, feel happier, have more control with the weight loss. Um, so I'm talking about weight loss. I'm doing a series of videos about weight loss. And so in my last video I talked about mindset and how that works around losing weight and how you're viewing food. Um, so yeah, I hope that helped you out, but there's because there's lots and lots of different things that's going on in your body that can be affecting weight loss especially around midlife, especially in perimenopause when your hormones are declining and they're up and down all over the place. Perimenopause is the most trying time for women. It does settle down, when your hormones settle down in menopause it does, you can control it much easier, um, your weight, your weight maintenance and be able to create a way of life, the way of eating to be able to carry on with that weight maintenance and get stronger and have more energy. Um, yeah, so what's happening over the age of 35 as your hormones are declining and they're going all over the place like a roller coaster ride, um, it's causing a bit of stress on your body. Your body's trying to keep up the hormone levels and as, as they're declining slowly, it has to take a long time to do this so your body doesn't get too stressed out and um, with regard to, to the reduction of these hormones and it's it's around this time that you lose your progesterone like crazy you know the cr progesterone is the, the hormone that goes low the quickest during this time because of the added amounts of stress going on in your body as it's coping with the hormone levels fluctuations and if you've got added stress in your life as well then that can add to your stress load um, there can be lots of different types of stress, there's psychological stress, exercise, diet, lifestyle stress and they can be adding to your stress bucket um, and it could be filling up your stress bucket uh, uh, as well. So it's even more important during this time to try and reduce your stress levels, look at where you are with your stress levels, what is causing you stress in your life. Because a lot of food that you can be eating can cause stress on your body if you're doing the wrong types of exercise, um, your mind stress, you're being too negative, you're not having enough downtime, enough rest time, giving yourself more love and self care, um, can all add. Um, if you're concentrating on all this to reduce that stress down in your body, it's going to help keep your body um, less stress in your body, help you to relax more, and your body is going to not want to hold on to that fat, it's going to want to be able to release that fat. Um, much more easily and be able to control it. Um, so in the second phase of perimenopause as well you're not always ovulating and because of the fluctuation of hormones because your ovaries are getting ready to, to stop uh, for, for stop releasing an egg, stop being fertile and so when because when you ovulate the second part of your cycle this is when you get a pop-up shop called the corpus luteum and this is what excretes your progesterone in the second part of your cycle. So if you're not ovulating every time, you're not creating this pop-up shop, you're not producing the, the, the amount of estro progesterone like you used to be able to do in, in your fertile years in 20s and your 30s. About 25% of progesterone is produced in your ovaries. You can produce progesterone in your adrenal glands as well. Um, and your body during this time naturally wants to hold on to fat. Because of the reduction of hormones, your body's more prone to hold on to your fat because you, you, your fat can make hormones. So if your body's panicking because it's losing hormones, it's thinking I need to hold on to fat a bit more because I'm, I'm feeling safe. But holding on to your fat is making your body feel safe. And it's also protecting you in, in, for times of famine um, as well. So your body always wants to protect you all the time. So it's thinking, oh, we're losing hormones here. We need to hold on to a bit more fat so we can produce more hormones. So this is what can be happening with you um, struggling to lose fat as well around your body. 
So, and that can make your estrogen levels go even higher because of your progesterone can go even lower because you're not ovulating and your stress levels will steal your progesterone as well to make stress hormones. So your progesterone can go even lower, very, very low because of stress because you stop ma your progesterone is stolen to cope with that stress. So it puts your progesterone, your estrogen levels higher even though you've got low levels of progesterone, you can have low levels of est estrogen and high levels of estrogen as well. So you can have lo uh, low estrogen and high estrogen, estrogen dominance, which seems to be a bit confusing. Well, how can you ever have high estrogen and low estrogen at the same time? It's because of the very low progesterone, because of the stress that can cause that. And then it puts your, your estrogen more dominant, even though it's low levels in perimenopause. I hope that explains it for you. You can understand that a bit better. So then what happens when you've got lots of stress? Well, your digestion shuts down, your hormone production shuts down, your fat burning will shut down, and your body will concentrate on saving your life because you're in danger, and it will always protect you, your body. So your body's on high alert. It protects you from energy, so it puts lots of sugar in your blood because your body needs lots of energy to run away from danger. So you've got constantly got lots of sugar in your being pumped out into your blood so your body can your energy your cells can uptake that and use it for energy so it can be put into your into your legs so you can run away and this can make you more prone to store fat as well because if you've got lots of sugar in your blood um, it can be stuffed into your fat cells as well so this is how you can struggle to lose fat it's called insulin resistance when your fat your, your cells can be resistant to um, the signs of insulin to let the sugar into your cells and that can be then you've got lots of sugar outside your cells it can be stuffed into your fat stores because sugar can't stay in your blood all the time it has to be put somewhere it has to be put into your cells or put into your fat cells um, you need it in your cells to be, to be used for energy um, like you've got cells all over your body cells in your brain on your ovaries and just everywhere so if you're having lots of um, brain fog or things like that because you're not, you're not getting enough sugar into your brain, into your cells in your brain, um, insulin resistance can cause lots of side effects um, as well as fat storage and so high levels of stress will equal um, holding on to fat and less fat burning so then you're going to really struggle to lose fat because of stress. So that's another reason why you may be struggling to lose weight, even though you're eating healthy foods because of the stress levels. And when you're in perimenopause, because of the loss of estrogen, you're more prone to lose muscle mass quicker and you're more sensitive to stress and you're more sensitive to sugar. So because when you've got high levels of estrogen, estrogen helps you to um, sens sensitizes your body to sugar, helps you to burn more sugar and estrogen helps you to build muscle as well. So with lower levels you can see how it can make it be more sensitive to those two, stress and sugar. So that's help, that will really put the brakes on your fat burning as well. Um, yeah, it's, 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 there's quite a lot going on isn't there in perimenopause. It can be really frustrating, you know, trying to, to lose fat. So you have to be really smart with lots of areas where especially your, your, your diet is a big part of that. To really get that right and every woman's different with regard to to where you are with what your healthy eating is what you're eating and this is what I help women with all the time I help women to look at the diet see where they're going wrong because what a healthy food for some woman is not a healthy food for another woman if you see what I mean because we're all different we're made up differently um, so you may be eating some healthy foods that you think that healthy. That's what happened to me, I was eating healthy foods and it wasn't the right food for me. I had to really look at that and think, I'm not getting any better. Um, it was affecting my health more than my fat burning. And so I had to just look at that and make changes for me, for my body. And every woman's different. So I just want to look at some, some foods now that can be causing some problems um, with your fat loss. And the two most obvious ones that I can think of that I talk to a lot of women about is, is wheat and gluten. You know, your bread, your pastas, things like that with wheat in. And there's so many foods now that you buy in the supermarket that contain wheat and gluten. 
and I don't eat wheat and gluten myself. And also dairy, dairy is a massive one. Um, it can affect a lot of things in your body during perimenopause and menopause, in midlife can dairy, um, <coughs> especially during this time of perimenopause. Um, if by cutting out gluten and dairy can really help you a lot with your health, for giving your body the building blocks it needs to cope with peri to help with um, with your weight maintenance. So look at those two, cut those out of your diet and see what, what if that makes a difference for you. And then another thing I want to look at is artificial foods, processed foods, artificial flavourings, artificial E numbers, bad fats that can, can be contained in processed foods. Um, and artificial sweeteners are the worst things in the world to eat. But your body doesn't recognise all these artificial things, artificial flavours, sweeteners. So when your body doesn't recognise anything, it can't digest it properly. It gets stuffed into your fat cells really easily. And so there, this might be a reason why you can't lose weight as well because of some of the processed foods you may be eating. And there are processed foods that are classed as healthy foods as well. Um, so look at that, especially chewing gum and it can mess with your gut flora artificial sweeteners can mess with your, your taste buds around the, the sweetness the taste of sweet in your, in your mouth it can affect that and it can make you want to eat more sugar more sugary things than normal and it can mess your gut flora up as well and your gut flora will, will play a part in a lot with your cravings and what foods that you want to eat um, you want to create a lot of more good bacteria in your gut rather than the bad bacteria. I like to call your gut your gut garden. You're either growing flowers or you're growing weeds. You want to have less weeds and more flowers. More of the good stuff, more of the good guys. Because the back, our bacteria outnumber our cells a thousand to one. We have more bacteria than cells in our body. So they, they rule the roost. They control a lot, a lot of things in your body, your metabolism, your mood, um, all those things. And I'm going to be going more in depth in another video about some health issues you may be suffering with that's stopping you from losing weight. And looking after your gut garden is, is a big one. And, and staying away from artificial things and sweeteners and that kind of affect your gut. And then it affects the way your body um, takes all the nutrients out of your food you're eating and your minerals, because your minerals are your spark plugs of your life. You need minerals to make things work in your body, to make the vitamins work, um, affects your thyroid working and carrying things around your body. It affects you getting sugar in and out of your cells, food in and out of your cells, um, it controls your, your your water balance, your potassium, your sodium, your blood, your blood uh, pressure and your blood sugar. So minerals are a massive part to control body, bodily processes. Um, so yeah, stay away from the artificial sweeteners. Um, you, you're thinking, oh, I'm, you're eating no sugar, no sugar chocolate because it's got artificial sweeteners in it. No, that's not any good at all. Don't eat them. Um, you want to eat things with got healthy sugars in, like honey or dates or maple syrup, things like that. Um, there's a lot of products now that you can buy with these healthy sugars in rather than going no sugar chocolate. Even get some get some chocolate. I have seen chocolate that does contain, you can get um, with monk fruit in it, or dates in it, um, or coconut nectar as well. Um, so they're, they're healthier sugars that, that's gonna be better for you than the artificial. So stay away from the artificial sweeteners. Another example of some healthy foods, you know, if you're eating granola, you know, what's, what's in that granola that you're eating? There could be some hidden sugars that you're not aware of if you don't look at the ingredients list. <clears throat> and in nut butters as well, it's so easy. It's going to be an almond butter. I just love almond butter and I like to put it on bananas. So if you're, if you're thinking that it, it's very easy to overeat nut butter, you know, like, it, like, like everything in life, it's about balance. You know, healthy foods, you can't eat, overeat like nut butters and things like that. Um, you don't want to be eating too much, too many nuts uh, throughout the day in one day. It can also um, affect your weight loss as well. So I hope that's helped you. I hope that's just helped you to try and fathom out a little bit about 
your healthy eating and what you could be eating that's affecting you and stress levels how that affects um, it affects your gut as well just the stress and how it can be stalling your fat loss um, so in my next videos I'm going to be talking about any health issues talking about your adrenal glands your thyroid your gut health more your liver and your kidneys um, and how they can play a part in your weight loss and then I'm going to talk about your lifestyle and how that can play a part in your weight loss as well so all these things do tie in and it's just it's just finding out this is what I help women women with all the time I help them find out what's going on in the body re regarding your lifestyle your exercise your mindset your t the toxins in your life your gut health your health overall your health you've if you've been on the birth control pill can be affecting your weight loss now because the birth control pill can destroy a lot of your nutrients and your vitamins that I wasn't aware of myself because I was on the birth control pill for 10 years and it destroyed a lot of my health so I can understand where you're coming from if you've been on the birth control pill yourself so thanks for watching my video please subscribe and like um, and, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already if you're new to me click on the bell so you get notified when I post more videos thanks for subscribing thanks for the likes thanks for the comments I really appreciate it thanks for following me so I'll see you later and have a great day evening wherever you are in the world take care of yourself and I'll see you again soon see you later